Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to our latest in our Henley webinars, uh, Investment Migration and Tax Considerations. Um, we'll be talking today a bit more focus on tax than we have done in the past, um, because this is a new area for Henley and Partners that we're doing more of than we have done in the past, and we'd like to sort of discuss that with you first. So, firstly, my name is Peter Farino. I am the Director of Tax Services at Henley and Partners, and I'm joined by my colleagues from around the world or around Europe, We'll be talking about the different programs there. Um, we, you know, as you see from the contents today, a little bit about Henley, a little bit about the general tax issues of investment migration first, then we'll run through five of our most popular residency programs across Europe, and then we'll close with some comparison of the tax differences as we go. Um, if you have questions, then do feel free to put them in the Q&A section of the uh, chat at the top, and we will try and address them as both as we go through or at the end. Um, depending on the most appropriate. But um, yeah, we're looking forward to having a good interactive session with you on that. So a little bit about Henley and Partners. I hope you'll see you up here so you know who we are a little bit. Um, we are the inventor in some ways of the investment migration, in, uh, residence and citizenship by investment. We've been doing this for 25 years. We've got over 45 offices around the world and we offer a variety of investment migration options depending exactly why you want to move and what reasons you have. And tax may be one of them, or it may not be. Um, and this varies very much by client. We've advised over 20,000 clients over that time, and we've secured over $12 billion of foreign direct investment in the countries that we channel the residents and by investment to. Um, that's why more than 15 governments trust us with that um, um, support, uh, supporting them in that area. So, as I said, Tax may or may not be a consideration for moving. So let me just run through the high level aspects of this. Um, and you know, firstly, the thing that I found most interesting is, you know, I've been doing tax for many, many years, too long to admit. Um, and the difference between residence in the residence by investment program and tax residence is one of the differences that we end up having to discuss quite often. The right to reside in a country is an immigration status and you have a permit, a residence permit, or a passport, or a residency card, depending on the country, and that allows you to come and go as you please. Tax residency is distinct from that, and tax residency is typically based on the time you spend in the country, either over, over a tax year or a rolling 12-month period. But in some countries, it is enough to have a permanent home or available accommodation in that country to become tax resident. And so it's important that each country's individual residency is understood so that both from a, having your residency permit, allowing you to come and go as you please, doesn't necessarily make you tax resident, but just understanding those differences is uh, key to bit making this successful. And I think it's more about avoiding surprises sometimes than actually saving the money necessarily. Individuals can be resident in more than one country. I mean, you can have multiple passports and citizenships depending where they're from and of course residency cards. But from tax purposes, ultimately, if you're resident in more than one country, a double tax agreement would come into effect and that would tell you which, which country is ultimately the one where you are deemed to be tax resident. Now, why is that important? Well, because one country will want to tax you on your worldwide income and they'll all, that will also include money that you earn in other countries or income that you earn in other countries. But the countries where you're not resident can only tax the income that's received in that country. So if you are an international person with income arising in various places, each of those sources will potentially have be able to be taxed in the country of source and the country of residence will come along afterwards and go, thank you very much. We would like to tax all of it, but we'll give you double tax relief if taxes have been paid elsewhere. Now, double tax agreements are um, bilateral, usually. Um, some few exceptions, like, like in the Caribbean, but you know, it will be between you know, Singapore and Spain, or between India and Italy, rather than you know, on the broader level. So every single double tax agreement, and there are like three and a half thousand, four thousand. Last time I looked, uh, they're all subtly different. They're typically based on the OECD model treaty or UN model treaty. Um, which is itself based on the OECD, um, but they will have subtle differences in terms of how they count residency, how they count days. So it's always important that we, we will always check back to the specific agreement as well, but the principles are always pretty similar. So like I say, when you're looking at residence by investment and citizenship by investment, you know, 
you've got the right to live there, but tax is driven by the tax residency. And only a couple of programs will give you an assumption that you're going to be there long enough to be tax resident. Because it's easy to get the residency card in some cases once you've made the investment. But if you want to renew it or extend it, they will say, well, have you been here long enough? Have you made this place your home? And that's where it starts to get interesting. Other programs may have a very small minimum time requirement, seven days a year, you know, may even no, no days a year. And in those cases, it's unlikely that you're going to be tax listed in those countries. We do have sometimes people come along and say, can I get a little bit of paper and claim I'm tax resident somewhere? And say, well, yes, as long as you are. And of course, that's really where it gets interesting. I'll come back to the end, to that at the end, because we're going to take you through now the five most popular programs that we have. And then that, you know, we're going to talk about a little bit about each country, about each program. And then I'll come back at the end and look at, you know, draw some themes out about tax for each of those. I see there's a question there already. Uh, yes. Um, and we will send the presentation afterwards if, if anyone's interested. But firstly, let's go to one of my favorite countries, Greece. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mario Rafael. And um, thank you, Peter, for being one of uh, your preferences in terms of uh, enjoying the country. And I think it's very useful that we are conducting this session today because more and more clients um, uh, are actually who are using our service in terms of obtaining another citizenship or residence by investment. They are also willing to relocate. And actually, uh, my country, Greece, has become very popular um, for this reason because uh, people in the past wanted to relocate because of its climate, the food, the quality of life, and many other advantages that I could name. But also, there are also some tax benefits uh, today when uh, someone is uh, relocating to Greece. So very quickly, a, a country overview of, uh, of Greece, it's a 10.5 million uh, population. Its uh, economy is basically service and industrial based, and actually the the economy now is booming after a 10 year financial uh, not uh, recession, but I would call it a depression. And uh, the well, the key reasons why the economy is now doing so well, um, not only because of uh, its stable government, but its uh, three key pillars, which is uh, real estate, shipping, and tourism, are booming. And um, Greece has become actually a success story. And in 2023, it was named by The Economist uh, globally as the country of, uh, of, uh, of the year. Next slide, please, Peter. Yeah, um, so basically one of the most popular programs in Europe now is the Greek uh, Golden Visa, which has nothing to do with any tax liabilities. So it's basically a residence permit. Uh, addressed uh, to non-EU uh, investors and applicants. It's renewable every five years. Uh, may, the, main, the main investment, as we will go uh, later on, is the real estate. So you can rent out uh, 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 the property. Um, you have the eligibility to apply for citizenship after seven years. Um, and also uh, the residence permit is renewed, as I said, every five years, and there are zero uh, physical uh, presence uh, requirements. Uh, you are still not um, uh, able to work, uh, to have an active gainful employment. It actually the government is working on that point, but uh, you can still be a, be a shareholder of a company and uh, uh, in Greece and receive passive income. And lately there are some uh, new tax uh, incentives for family offices in Greece. So it's becoming like a family office uh, hub. Um, Greece is becoming a family office hub. So what are basically the requirements? The key requirement to obtain the Greek Golden Visa actually is it's quite straightforward. The key requirement is, of course, the investment. And uh, uh, the vast majority of our clients are, um, are uh, conducting a real estate uh, investment there are other options like um, options like investment in liquid assets fi like financial instruments like time deposit government bonds but still real estate remains a, a very popular uh, option and actually clients who have who started applying since 2017 18 they see now that there is a very huge capital appreciation on the real estate asset and unless there is a geopolitical accident, it uh, it looks uh, all uh, local players remain ve remain very bullish on that sector. The minimum investment is two hundred fifty thousand euros 
in 99% geographically of uh, Greece, with the exception of uh, some areas of Athens, like the center, the south, and, uh, and uh, the north, but not all areas of Athens, in Mykonos and in Santorini, where the minimum investment is half a million euros. So the key takeaway is that, like again, that in most regions of Greece, the real estate value remains at 250,000 uh, 250, uh, euros. On top of that, there are some formalities like to have a proof of, of uh, health insurance coverage, to have a valid um, visa at the beginning of the application process in order to enter Greece. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, besides the investment in an intangible asset like real estate, there is also the, the possibility to invest in liquid assets like um, a time deposit of a government bond. And um, uh, following our topic today, and as mentioned before, Greece has become also a very attractive destination uh, in terms of uh, actual relocation. And actually in 2023, Greece was uh, uh, sixth in the world in terms of high net worth individuals that were actually relocating uh, uh, to this uh, specific country according to the data published and uh, published by Henley and Partners. And why is that? Because there are very there are two new tax incentives. The one is the lump sum uh, payment, the annual lump sum payment of one hundred thousand uh, uh, of one hundred thousand euros, where basically any Greek tax liability on the foreign source income is basically offset by this payment of one hundred thousand euros, and you can include also your close relatives for another twenty thousand euros. Uh, per year, and you are exempted from different kinds of taxes like wealth tax, dividend tax, inheritance tax, gift tax. Um, what is important to know is that during the first three years that someone is conducting this uh, tax incentivized program of paying 100,000 euros per year on a lump sum basis, he also has to conduct an investment of minimum half a million, uh, half a million euros. In any asset class in Greece, the Greek government is quite flexible. So to give you an example, if someone obtains a golden visa with 250,000 euros and then he decides to become a tax resident in Greece under this scheme, he can top up another 250,000 euros. And uh, basically, uh, he also checks the box in terms of this uh, condition. Another very, very popular uh, tax scheme, which is addressed uh, uh, not only to non-European, I mean, bo both schemes are addressed to non-Europeans and Europeans, but we see also for the second program, the 7% flat tax, a lot of pensioners also from Europe, is the 7% flat tax, where basically if someone does not have an active gainful employment and he has his receiving pension income, he can benefit from an alternative uh, taxation where each year he's going to be paying a rate of 7% on their income received from abroad, of course, with the exhaustion of tax obligations on this income. So uh, in order to be, of course, a tax resident there, you have to actually phys physically relocate in Greece and not be tax resident for the previous five or six years prior to the transfer of the tax residence to Greece. So these two programs, and of course, in, in, in conjunction with the Greek Golden Visa program, has actual, have actually made Greece a very popular destination for a reason that uh, used that uh, would uh, be very, very surprising in the last year, in the last years. But lately, through, the, through these programs, Greece has become a tax uh, incentivized country for someone to relocate. Um, again, these are the investment options, uh, investment in real estate, in uh, time deposit. There is also the option of time saving or lease agreement. These are for the golden, for the Greek golden visa. The most popular is the real estate and uh, the time deposit. Well, how is the process? And I think this is a very standardized process for all the, all the programs that we are going to discuss uh, today. So the client is contacting Helen Partners as we uh, we have a very thorough compliance checks in actually to actually in order to protect the client we conduct the due diligence checks and then um, if all goes well the client uh, is paying the 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 um, is, is signing the contract and we initiate uh, the process.
And here, as uh, Peter mentions in this slide, again, this is a, a very quick overview of what I mentioned before. Thank you very much. Marius, that was brilliant. Thank you. I know you, it's lovely listening to someone who loves talking about his scheme as much as it is, because it's a really passion for you, isn't it? That one that it's uh, telling people how great Greece is, is lovely. Now, moving on to one of my other favorite countries um, is, I'm probably going to be doing that all the way through, to be honest. Here we are in Rome. So let's now talk about the Italian Residence by Investment Program. Elena, thank you. Thank you, Peter. Good day to everyone. Thank you for being with us today. And my presentation, I would like to start with the words of the famous Italian composer, Giuseppe Verdi. Once he said, you may have the universe if I may have Italy. As you can see, Italy's charm lived so much in Giuseppe Verdi that he would have chosen Italy over the entire universe. A globally recognized touristic destination with all its architectural heritage, one of the best world's cuisine, warm climate, has much more to offer, as you know. Population of the country is 61 million, along with the official Italian language, French and German also are widely spoken. Italy has a diversified economy with the leading industries as tourism, good manufacturing, and also agricultural and service sectors, and currency obviously euro. A holder of an Italian residence permit can benefit from the following points below. Free movement within the Schengen area, an opportunity to reside in the country with a rich culture, attractive industries, and major cities as Roma, Milano, and Venezia. An option to benefit from a special tax regime. I will cover this topic a bit later. Access to an excellent medical care and education facilities and the right to apply for Italian citizenship after 10 years of residence. The most attractive and efficient offering from the side of the Italian government that is currently available on the market is investor visa program. And there are free investment options depending the preferences to choose from in order to be eligible to get an investor visa. The first one is an investment of at least 2 million in government bonds that should be issued by Italian government. That is treasury bonds, zero coupon bonds, treasury bonds, long-term treasury bonds, and also BTPs, Italy, with residual maturity period of at least two years. Another investment option is uh, at least 500,000 euro in securities representing the share capital of companies incorporated and operating in Italy. They should not be obligatory listed. This is important. And if the company is defined by Italian law as an innovative startup, the investment amount is even reduced. And you are just investing 250,000. And the last investment option is a donation of at least 1 million euro in the public interest project in several fields like culture, education, or scientific research. Important to mention here that the first two investment types, 2 million in government bonds and also 200,000 in Italian shares, they should be kept during the whole validity of the residence permit and in the initial form and without any changes. Another residence program that I will just slightly touch is elective residence. This offering is normally interesting just for those individuals who are planning to relocate in Italy and become tax residents. In order to be qualified for this type of residence, individual is asked to prove a stable annual income at a certain quantity from abroad. And this quantity normally depends on the 
uh, quantity of the applicants who are applying for this type of residency. As you can see, not much for flexibility is allowed in terms of uh, this residence program. Let's go to another slide. This is for FATEX regime. This is something similar what actually Greece recently introduced, Marius mentioned previously. Uh, Italy has introduced in 2017 a special tax regime intended first of all to attract Italian residents who previously left Italy, most of all football players, of course. And now also this tax regime is also available for foreign nationals who have been residents out of Italy for at least nine of the previous 10 years. And they are asked to transfer their tax residence to Italy and to pay a fixed amount of 100,000 euro with possibility to extend benefits of this regime to immediate family members, just only for those mem family members who are financially active by paying additionally annual 25,000 euro per each applicant. This regime is automatically renewed every year and terminates after 15 years, one file. This is maximum, what is allowed. An individual opting for the flat tax regime will be exempt from gifts and inheritance tax related to assets and real estate for those entities that are allocated abroad, also from tax on real estate owned abroad and from wealth tax on foreign financial instruments, and of course, on remittances tax. Let's move to another slide, Peter, please. So here we have the process, how we do in Hanley. One, the successful individual is onboarded by us, where the standard procedure we have in Hanley applies. We start to work over the application documents. The main points here are an individual should be beneficial owner of the financial resources necessary to carry out to the chosen investment. The second point that the financial resources should be available and transferable to Italy without any obstacles. And of course, these financial resources should be derived from the licit sources. An individual should have, sh shouldn't have any criminal records or pending charges, and this uh, we should also prove documentally. Upon readiness of the application, it is to be submitted to Italian committee electronically, and the committee normally responds within 30 days, provided that there are no additional requests. When an individual is in possession of the approval letter, he can get a visa D in the Italian consulate of his current residence, and he can then enter Italy and register within the local authorities. This type of visa sometimes is called fast track visa because the decision is obtained relatively fast compared to elective residence about which I slightly uh, talked about when the application is submitted directly to the Italian consulate and the decision is normally uh, gotten within two, three and even four months. There are no special requirements though towards real estate. It can be rented or purchased, but the real estate should be available during the whole validity of the residence permit because the residence card is to be linked to a certain address locally in Italy. Investor visa is valid for two years and to be renewed for subsequent three years, provided that the investment is maintained. Elective residence permit is issued just for one year and to be renewed each year subsequently, proving that the stable income from outside still available. Um, on this last slide, we have all key benefits of the investor visa program I talked about. 
that will be available for a proud owner of Italian residence permit. Thank you so much for your attention. If you have any question, please send me them via chat function or just approach us in Handley. We will be pleased to attend your request. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Okay, that, so uh, you know, moving slightly further west again, we now get to Malta. And uh, Serene, you are uh, happy to take us through the Malta Permanent Residence Program. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to reach us today. Um, so we are going to be discussing the Permanent Residency Program. For whoever has visited Malta already, um, I am sure that you all have been charmed by the very small island. Um, the small yet highly advanced nation of Malta is in the Mediterranean, uh, and it's a, the Mediterranean is best kept secret. Um, it is part of the EU uh, and has risen to be one of the EU's leading investment locations. Uh, driven by its reputation for stability, uh, predictability, and security. So for Handy and partners to be able to submit the, an application to uh, through a residency multi-agency for a residency permit, we have to be registered as an agent with the local uh, government agency, which is our case and our registration number can be seen here as AKM and um, and this is renewable every year. We would not be able to um, process any applications without registration. Uh, so Malta's population uh, is of 467,000 inhabitants. The language mainly is Maltese and English. Uh, it's, um, the economy is advanced and innovation driven, and the currency uh, of, uh, used in Malta is the euro. Next slide, please. So what are the key benefits to apply for the Malta Permanent Residency Program? Uh, so you have visa-free access to all countries within the EU Schengen area. Um, you can be a resident uh, in an EU member state that is neutral, stable, and highly respected. Uh, you have the right to reside, settle, and study in Malta as well. Uh, you have the opportunity to ask your application, uh, your parents, your spouse, and any children uh, that are financially dependent on you. This will also fall for the spouses of the, of the children eventually down the line and the children of the children also eventually down the line. So Malta has a Mediterranean climate and a very friendly population. I've been myself settled here for more than 50, 14 years, sorry. So uh, it's, uh, it says it all. Um, it's conveniently located. So we, are, we have very good sea and air links to Europe, Asia, and uh, North Africa. So what are the requirements to apply for the permanent residency program of Malta? Um, applicants must fulfill uh, the following requirements. So you have to have the proof of a capital of 500,000 euros, out of which you would need 150,000 in financial assets. So liquidity on bank account, investment on bonds, securities, and so on. Um, one of the requirements is to always have hand in hand with your valid residency card a purchase or a leased property. So it, it depends, uh, obviously, it's, it all depends on the choice of the, the applicant. Now, um, this property, if it's purchased, should have a valid um, amount of 350,000 uh, in Malta. But if it's in the south of the island or on the sister island, Gozo, it can be of a value of 300,000. Uh, alternatively, <laughs> sorry, you can uh, rent a property in Malta for 12,000 euros in the center and in the south of the island or the sister island also 10,000 euros. And this should be for a minimum of five years. Uh, the first five years are a requirement and cannot be uh, the rent or the purchase cannot be stopped. There's also a contribution um, which depends on if you would be leasing or purchasing a property. So in the case you would purchase the property, the contribution uh, to the government agency would be of 28,000 euros. And in the case you would be leasing your property, the government contribution for the permanent residency program is of 58,000 euros. There's a mandatory donation to a non-governmental organization of 2,000 euros. And uh, as part of the review of the permanent residency program application, there will be a non-refundable administration fee of 40,000 euros. Next, please. So what are our processes? Um, as all our other programs, uh, so first contact us. We run our 
strict due diligence on each and every applicant that comes uh, through to us. Then um, the client agreement and the retainer, this is when the client agreement kind of place in the retainer space. Um, we will start collecting all the necessary documents for the application for permanent residency process. Once we have everything in hand, we will put this through to the government agency, residency, multi-agency for review. This is when the due diligence um, from a residency multi-agency will take place. And within four to six months, I will say more six months than four to be, to be fair, uh, we will receive the decision. And once the, app the application is approved, uh, the clients will have to fulfill the requirements, which include uh, valid medical insurance, the lease of the property or the purchase and so on. Um, we can see four to six months, so this is the, process, the, the time that it takes. Once the process has been finalized, the applicants and their dependents will receive um, a residency certificate, which is an indefinite residency certificate. And this is when we can apply to um, receive the residency card. Now, it's very important to know that the residency card has to stay uh, for the first five years, has to stay valid, and then you have to have uh, to abide by the requirements. Uh, for these first five years. If you decide that to renew your residency card for any reason uh, after five years and you just uh, decide to give it um, a break of two years, when you will come to renew your residency card, it does not mean that it will stop uh, your, um, it will stop you by renewing the residency card because your residency certificate is indefinite. Uh, so the permanent residency program overview. So as we said, there's a minimum contribution a total, a total of 175,000. It takes about six months for the process to take place. Uh, the key benefits um, are again that you have access to Europe's Schengen area. Uh, you have you would be the resident of an EU member state, uh, which is neutral, stable, and highly respected. Uh, you can include your family members to the application and Malta has got a very pleasant uh, Mediterranean climate and it's a very pleasant country also to be settled in. So this is it from my end. We'll try to make it short and sweet because I think we're running out of time and we're, we're going to move to the next country. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Now, for those of you wondering, were we going east to west or were we going in alphabetical order? We've finally got the answer to this because we are going now to Portugal. So, uh, in. Great. Thank you, Peter. So, uh, bon dia, thank you for joining us today. I'm here to speak about Portugal. Portugal is one of those small countries, but a fantastic country to live uh, and to invest as an investor, just to come and visit. Uh, it's a uh, it's very globalized nation. It's one of the oldest countries uh, in Europe. So if you're looking for history and culture, uh, this is the place to be. If you're looking for surfing and diving in the coastline, this is the country. If you want to hike uh, from you know south to north, this is the country to be in. We can even go to the Camino of Santiago and go to Spain. The wine tours, the skiing. We've even got snow in Portugal, and we are a very open um, nation. Nation. We open for all uh, nationalities, all religions. So that makes us one of the most safest countries in the world. Uh, small country, ten point, just over ten million people. Portuguese, of course, is the language, but English is widely spoken. Everyone speaks uh, English, and it's a business-oriented um, economy, uh, services, tourism are, is our main uh, factor. And, of course, uh, Euro, because we're in the European Union. Now, I want to speak about the uh, Portugal Golden Residence Permit. So it's a program that has been well established for over, you know, almost 11 years, since 2012. Uh, that's when it started, and today it's still uh, working. So no, the Portugal program has not ended. So please uh, reach out to us because it's very vibrant at the moment. Portugal, very a lot of interest continues in Portugal. What do you have? A little bit similar to what my colleagues have spoken to you about. You've got visa-free access to the European Schengen visa. One of the main factors here is you... Uh, having a residence can apply for citizenship once you have five years. Uh, I also would need to, you know, drop in a, key, uh, a quick line here because uh, two weeks ago our parliament has voted uh, that they might change the citizenship 
a timing. So it could be the time that you submit your application and not the timing when you receive your card. So if that comes, um, if that uh, is approved, that would be very good news for all our clients that have been waiting. So the, the time of waiting has not been wasted. You, the physical low requirement, you only need to spend 14 days in two years or seven days a year. Or if you want to live in Portugal, relocate to Portugal, you can live here, you can work here, and you, the kids can study here. So family, family reunification, including uh, your civil partner, same gender partners, that's important to tell you. We've got a lot of clients with same gender partners. Uh, excellent schools, uh, like in, I think in any European country, Portuguese universities um, also, and then the high quality of life. And that's the big, big, big factor, I think, of Portugal. We ranked one of the top 10, but I think we could even be a little bit more because it's, it's just a, a fantastic, good cuisine, all of that. So let's go to the requirements. Uh, one I need to tell you is from October 2023 they stopped the real estate investment option. But as you can see here, we've still got five investment options that you as an investor can apply for the program. The one that we think will be the most popular and what we've seen in the beginning of this year and even the uh, end of last year is the investment fund. So you invest in a fund that qualifies for golden visa. Of course, we will make sure that it qualifies for golden visa. And um, as long as it doesn't invest in real estate, okay, so the real estate is completely out. Uh, the other one is in a research activity, so it's a donation um, into 500k for scientific and 250 for cultural heritage. And that's also another one that uh, people are very interested in, also with the minimum uh, threshold of only 250. If you choose a project in a low density area, then you can have a 20% reduction coming to 200k. So that's the minimum threshold. And then you've got the business. The business options have always been there since the very beginning. So you've got the creation of 10, uh, 10 jobs, eight if it's in a low density area, and then a company that already exists and you inject money into a company that already exists. So Portugal program, Golden Visa, still working, so you can still apply. So let's get on to our topic, the main topic of this webinar, and we want to speak about the tax. So for you, all of you that know, Portugal has been have, has a very attractive um, tax regime, which was called the non-habitual tax regime, started in 2009. Um, so they did a few changes at the end of last year. Uh, good news is that you are grandfathered in and protecting those that still want to do this regime, the NHR, um, you can still do it. Uh, until uh, 31st of December 2024. So they've given us the whole year this year to still apply if you wish to do so. Uh, so it's a regime that's for 10 years. Uh, what has changed now uh, is the 20% rate on Portuguese sourced uh, employment, self-employment. So those are the changes that they are doing to the program. While having Portuguese sourced salaries or fees, You've got tax exemption on foreign salaries, uh, capital gains. So the capital gains was one that was out. They've included it now. Uh, capital gains on securities that were usually not exempt, and today they will be exempt. So there's no benefits on the foreign uh, pension income uh, or even from black uh, jurisdiction countries, which uh, is normal. Um, today, I must tell you that there are some gray areas on how this will actually be implemented. So bear with us. Uh, Portugal will get, uh, you know, the, the general implementation uh, working, but at the moment, there's still gray areas there. So Portugal is like that. So just to recap uh, on what I've just said, minimum contribution to 50 in the low density area, it's 200K. The process today is a little bit longer than these 18 months. But I can tell you that we've been seeing an, a, a huge improvement now in January. And our minister has promised that she would clear the backlog until the first quarter of 2024. So fingers crossed and our uh, investors and clients will be happy. Uh, in the passport index, it's a, it's a European passport, just like our colleagues. So of course, gives you the right in, to live in any uh, European country. Um, and then visa-free, the eligibility for citizenship, the low physical presence, 
or all of that that I've already mentioned. I do want to touch on another uh, topic is that we uh, were ranked the best dessert in 2023 from Taste Atlas and the fourth best cuisine. So all good reasons to come to Portugal, programs still working, we're still all here in Portugal and looking forward to our new year. Thank you. Okay, I just can taste those desserts already. So, <laughs> so um, again, to, uh, to the fifth of my five favorite countries here, That's thanks very much, Amy, on that one. There. Yeah, say so Portugal, there was a lot of excitement at the end of last year, particularly on the tax side. But the good news is it's, you know, the door is not closed yet. But what's the old buy now while stocks last um, is going to be the issue there. But if um, moving right next door, we are going to go to Spain. So Andreas is going to take us through España. Thank you very much, Peter, and thank you very much, uh, Amy, for the presentation as well. I must say that you got me with the Camino de Santiago, uh, nice food and nice wine, because we are getting close to, to lunch here. But coming down here to, to Spain, um, just a little bit of a country overview. You may know it already, it has a population of around 50 million people, uh, main cities, Madrid, Barcelona, great connections with all the world, basically around 11 to 13 hours to Latin America, six to eight hours to the US, um, and then 12 to 14 hours to uh, Southeast Asia, current cities, the Euro, uh, member of the European Union, of course, Schengen area, one of the best countries to invest in behind Portugal, actually, according to our Henley Real Estate uh, Index that we launched in 2022. So going to the, to the process and to the main advantages and touching base with certain things about the uh, tax considerations as well, not going to delve much into that as Peter will will go into into some particularities, but just to let you know that of course the client, the the applicants, when so they come here, they obtain their civil residence permit. Uh, and certain things which are very interesting, it is that the entire process it is it is digitally and uh, and remotely done uh, at a residency stage. So the entire process normally takes between five to seven months. The application processing normally takes 20 working days, normally having approvals in 10 to 15 days, uh, approximately. The residence card issued for three years and then renewed every five years and applicants can live and work anywhere in Spain and of course have Schengen access. Um, there's no minimum stay in Spain, which is required. Of course, if the applicant is going to, or the beneficiary is going to stay in the country for more than six months, it will trigger um, tax residency. And there, it is very important that uh, all beneficiaries, they have a discussion with the Peter at the end of the day in this sense, because, you know, Spain and taxes can be sometimes be a little bit complicated. You have the impatriate regime that you can apply with certain income from outside of Spain. It is excluded and certain income from Spain. It is included only. So basically moving to the key benefits of, uh, of these cities, uh, the main benefit for those Latin American um, nationals that are hearing us, if, if there is any, it is not Latin American nationals, Philippine nationals, Equatorial Guinea nationals that can apply for Spanish citizenship after only two years of effective residence in the country. Of course, you have great quality of life from the north to the south, great schools, both private and public, and the same happens with education. Uh, now, on our next slide, we're going to see at least the different options, investment options that allow um, residents in the country. And uh, and here it's about talking about tax, what Peter was, was saying at the beginning. There are different options to access residency by investment, and that actually has different tax treatments. So, for example, in Spain, you have of course, the most sought after and popular is real estate investment of minimum half a million euros, which can be in any kind of real estate and they can be rented out. But also we have many clients that they choose the financial investment assets. So basically here we're talking about any Spanish uh, registered fund with a Spanish IC number, any term deposit, listed share in the Spanish stock market, and last uh, basically 2 million euros in government bonds, which it is not popular at all, to be, to be very honest uh, with you. 
Uh, and then basically on the next slide, we're going to see this uh, a little bit of the, the process I was seen, seen before. You know, it is um, the same process similar. You know, the, the client gets in touch with us. We run our due diligence. Um, and of course, then we start with the, the type of investment, the type of investment that is being seen before. Um, they, um, it is very important to see the type of uh, tax consequences of the investment that the client would like to make because a real estate investment will trigger stamp duty and other associated costs, whilst the financial investment does not have a stamp duty, of course, uh, but then basically at the time of the exit of that investment, there is a capital appreciation, there are returns that they will be taxed at the moment of the exit, depending on certain conditions uh, as well. So once that investment is being made uh, and the residency application has been submitted, uh, an application has been approved, the applicant needs to come to Spain where we, with one of our relation managers, we take him to the uh, police station to provide the biometrics, and then the residence permit, it is uh, issued for three years and collected by the applicant in person. All these takes approximately five to seven months. And of course, if the beneficiary is looking forward to move effectively to Spain or thinking that it's going to spend more than six months, it is very important to, to contact Peter, of director of tax services, to look into that implication um, of, uh, of tax relocation, of tax residency, to see if there is any double taxation treatment that can be applied, if there is any possibility of the impatriate regime. So thank you very much. And Peter, over to you, I believe. Oh, muchas gracias. Um, so we've had a lot of information there. So let me maybe summarize that first, and then we can uh, look at these issues. So clearly, let's think about why you're moving first or what your issues are on, on relocating. or And then because those will determine what tax issues are going to be most important to you. If you're going to be just living there, or if you're going to be working or running a business, um, we have a lot of people that relocate for study purposes or where their children are going to university and they, those can create some little tax excitements if you're buying real estate for them to live in while they're studying, for example. So sometimes capital gains tax is going to matter, sometimes inheritance tax or gift taxes, income taxes. So have a look on what your reasons may be and then let's look at all the different countries and, and see which is going to be the best one for you. Because what we often do here is go across the people where people are relatively agnostic because all of these are fantastic places. And as you've probably worked out, they're all my favorite country in different ways. Um, the, you know, let's look at what your reasons for moving might be and what your biggest considerations are going to be. Because if, some, if capital gains matters to you, then let's go somewhere without capital gains tax. But if it's not an issue, then maybe you've got more choices. Also, it's helpful just to summarize, you know, there were 250,000, 500,000, a million, 2 million, which country is which. Um, and again, you see there are differences there, all very, very similar, but in different ways in terms of the scale and the size of the potential investment that needs to be made. And so each of those will have a different tax consequence. Now, in the, in the good old days of two or three years ago, when everybody just moved on the basis of residential property that they just stayed in when they was there, when they were there, then tax wasn't so much of a consideration. But now if you're looking at bank deposits and government bonds or commercial property, those are all income generating assets. And if you remember way back to the beginning, or oh, nearly 40 minutes ago, I mentioned about the difference between resident and non-resident for tax purposes. If you have made your investment to get your residence by investment, but you haven't moved there to become tax resident, you're still potentially going to have taxable income from the government bond interest or the investment fund that you've invested in. And it's important just to be clear on those that tax is going to be re required and getting you set up with the tax advisor locally to do that. Now, if you're making one of those business investments, obviously the company's going to have operating profits potentially. You're going to maybe have salary or dividends as an investor or a shareholder, and maybe even social security if you're going to get paid. So all of these are going to create a different set of questions for you as you move and you look at what your relocation things are. Tax residents, we talked about at the beginning, most countries, you know, 183 days is the default, but some countries have more specific tests. For example, if your habitual residence or habitual mode or your center of interest have moved or you acquired permanent residence, 
you may get taxable, it may be treated as a tax resident, even if you're only there for three or four months a year. The classic one is if your spouse and dependents remain there, but you travel around the world with your job, are you going to still be deemed as being tax resident there because that's where your spouse is or where your family are? So again, you know, if you've got residents in other places, we go through a detailed diagnostic there just to see that you're not going to be caught out because everybody knows about the 183 days or thinks they do. They don't necessarily meet, realize that that still means you're taxable on the income that's sourced there. And they certainly don't always realize that just because you're less than 183 days, but your spouse may be more and your kids are in school there, it may trip you over that level and still being resident, especially if you haven't, if you've given up your tax residency somewhere else. So that's always the sort of journey we take you through to make sure that there are no hidden surprises there. And again, like I said, things to look at, inheritance taxes, gift taxes, wealth taxes, capital gains tax, uh, Andres and I have a, you know, fa a famous problem of course is the Spanish wealth tax, which the others don't have. Now under the non-resident regimes and the special regimes, it doesn't apply necessarily. And there, it, it's one of those taxes that is a regional. So certain parts of Spain, we had a client recently where in certain parts of Spain, his wealth tax would have been 40 or 50,000 euros a year. In other parts of Spain, it would have been 4,000 euros a year. Strangely enough, he was worried about 50,000. He wasn't worried about 4,000. And so, um, yeah, that helps you determine where your property investment should make, be made, for example. Uh, capital gains tax is another one, because if you are move, moving to sell your company, should you sell your company and then move, or should you move and then sell your company? These considerations are things that we need to discuss in detail because the surprises can be quite shocking if you get that wrong. Now, the flat tax of 100,000 is a great one for both Italy and Greece. You tend to have to be a squillionaire, whatever that means, to, to for that to be worthwhile because um, but you know, other countries will have a flat tax on remittance basis or Portugal, the 20% the basis for the uh, non-habitual will still apply for employment income under the new rules. Spain under the digital nomads, remote workers, 24% on your first 600,000 euros should be enough for people that are still working for a living. And pensions, um, both Greece and Malta have potential you know, low tax rate for foreign pensioners. So if you are thinking about retiring, you might want to be thinking about countries where the pension rates are lower. And so all these things are very variable and four, well, five places that all of them have very similar charms, quality, all great food, all great wine, all great quality of life in different ways, but very, very different tax regimes. So please make sure that you don't pick the wrong one. Because I say the move away from residential property means that you know, you're going to be a lot more likely investing in yielding assets and making sure that tax is understood is going to be a key to making that move work with you. Now, typically the way we tend to work is you'll be moving from, you know, whether it's you know, India, Asia Pacific, the US, and you may be choosing which of these countries to retire to. Now, it may be that you already have your tax advisor in your home country. Um, my job is to make their life simple so they don't have to learn five different systems to help you choose which of these five beautiful places is the right one for you. Maybe we'll discuss your objectives and get it down to a short list of maybe even you know two or three or even one or two and then see which are the most important one issues for you to talk about there. Then once you've decided, we'll work with tax advisors in those countries, get an estimate done of what your tax costs might be. And then when you finally decided which country is the right one, then we'll work with the tax council in that country to get a service package around the tax registration, tax return compliance. So my job is to sit in the middle and make sure that you're not having, if you've got a highly complex structure, you don't want to explain it four times to people that aren't actually going to be doing that in the long term, you know, particularly if it's a complex business arrangement, you know, you don't, you know, it, it's just to keep your life simple and it avoids that also for tax advisors having to invest time and money into something where you're ultimately not going to work there anyway. So Henley and Partners Tax Services was launched last year. Our aim is to offer expert impartial advice to global citizens and say, and the advising, adding local expertise to the international client base. You know, all of our tax people have worked in the larger firms in private client or mobility areas. 
um, specialists. You know, we worked at some of the top tax firms and law firms in the world, and very, very specifically focused on the issues facing relocating individuals, not only the individual, but also if they've got families or businesses, um, you know, that is an area that we can dig into there. And let's say we're not looking to get in the way of your existing advisors, you will live, typically have a long lasting relationship with those. And our job is to work side by side with your tech, existing advisors and, and get the technical insight to sort of bridge those differences from east to west, west to east. Um, and so I could talk about that all day, um, but we are coming to the end of that. So we do got a little bit of time for Q&A. Um, so I will just flick to the questions there. A lot of people are asking if the slides will get um, circulated. Yes, they will. Um, so we will um, get the link sent out to you afterwards. Scrolling down, Malta, I think there's a question there, Serene. Do you have to fill all the requirements or only one? I think it is. It's a choice, isn't it? We're just working with, you know, either, you know, I think one slide you had all the different things like with the investment and the contributions. Yes, you have to fulfill all the requirements, which are the property requirements, the donation to the government agency, the mandatory, um, a mandatory donation um, to a charity organization. Um, yeah, these have to all be um, done. Yeah, and my rule of thumb is if there's lots of small ones, you've probably got to make all of them. If there's a big one, like one million or two million, it's either or. So thank you for that one. Let me just look, everyone else is asking for slides again. Um, wealth tax implications after purchasing property in Spain or Portugal. I hope I've covered that for you. Um, again, it depends very much on the class of assets, but yeah, that uh, tends to be the thing you want to do first is look, because there are exemptions for your personal home potentially. And if you're married, you have, two allowances potentially. So those will be something that you need to look at. And I say in Spain, the wealth tax is regional. So it's about, and the trend is towards abolition. I know the Balearics abolished it on the 1st of January, which was useful because that's quite a popular destination there. Um, I think that's covered all the questions that I've seen there. So on the basis that we are now exactly where we said we'd finish, Time-wise, um, I would like to thank all of my colleagues for their time and their presentations today, and also not only for the time today, but the time pulling all this information and material together. It's a big job to get these things there. And of course, first presentation of the year, January, things always have to change potentially, so it's always good to get these things updated. Um, so thank you to all of you, and thank you also to the 150 of you that have been here at some point or other during that. Uh, okay, it's slightly down below that now. So thank you to those that left as well, who had other things to do. Um, so yep, we are here to help. We are here to support. Um, you know, do feel free to reach out to us if you are thinking if any of these things have tempted you to think, well, you know, I really need to get moving on moving to the one of those places because now you can work remotely from somewhere. You can always be somewhere else. And that somewhere else could very easily be a Mediterranean island or country where you've got the sea and the beach and the wine and the food and the great relax. Oh, it's enough to. Sorry, I gotta I gotta go and do some tax work now, so I gotta get focused again. But anyway, that's where we are. You see all the benefits of this. You know it makes sense. You know what you want to do. It come talk to your Henley advisors in those countries and jump on that plane soon. And we will see you somewhere in the, in the sunny parts of Europe, hopefully at some point in your life. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank Cheers. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.